Greetings, fellow mathematicians, and welcome back to the art of integration. For this problem, we're going to get a little bit more creative with our use of algebraic tricks. Now, if we think back to previous problems where we tried the algebraic trick of adding zero, we might be tempted here to take our numerator sine of x, add cosine of x to it, and subtract cosine of x to it. So let's see if that works. All right, we're going to keep the denominator the same, sine of x plus cosine of x, and the numerator, sine of x, we're going to add cosine and subtract cosine, adding zero. So we'll write this as sine of x plus cosine of x minus cosine of x. And again, we're using the algebraic trick here of adding zero. Now this seems like it might be helpful because sine plus cosine will cancel with sine plus cosine in the denominator, but notice you'd be left with another fraction, cosine of x, divided by your denominator. And that seems pretty much like the original integral, just with cosine of x in the numerator instead of sine of x. So this technique of adding zero in this form doesn't seem to be too helpful. Maybe you can get it to work, but we're gonna look at an alternate way to add zero. Now, what we have up here is an identity where we have a function f of x and we're adding zero in a peculiar way. First, notice why this is true. One half of a function plus one half of a function gives you the function f of x. But now you have one half g of x minus one half g of x, which cancels. So this is an identity and how we're gonna use it here is thinking of f of x as sine of x And this is where we're going to use the adding and subtracting of cosine to get some terms to cancel with your denominator. So here, we're gonna use f of x as sine of x, and g of x, we're gonna replace it with cosine of x. So we'll write this identity as 1 half sine of x plus cosine of x, and then the other part plus a half sine of x minus cosine of x. And that is an identity, that is true. So let's use this technique or version of adding zero instead of the original version that we tried. So let's go ahead and rewrite our numerator. It's gonna be a little bit long, so we have 1 half sine of x plus cosine of x, and then we have a similar term, but just with a minus between. So that should be plus one half, sine of x minus cosine of x. And that's all over your denominator, sine of x plus cosine of x. And this is where we're now gonna have terms cancel. Notice if I split this up, we have sine plus cosine divided by sine plus cosine. That will cancel, leaving us with one half. And notice here, sine of x minus cosine of x divided by sine of x plus cosine of x. That looks like something we might be able to try and evaluate with a basic substitution. So we have a one half, and we'll write that sine of x minus cosine of x over your denominator, sine of x plus cosine of x. All right, now if you want, you can pull the factor of a half out, but it doesn't really make a difference. This first term, one half, that's very easy to integrate. You're just gonna get one half x. This term, sine minus cosine over sine plus cosine, that we can do with a basic substitution. So let's go ahead and evaluate that. We have it as sine of x minus cosine of x divided by sine of x plus cosine of x. We're gonna find this antiderivative and then we'll multiply that back in here by the one half when we evaluate the whole integral here. 
All right, and if we try our substitution, let's go with our substitution variable t. Let's take it as the denominator, sine plus cosine. And notice from your basic Calc 1 derivatives, you know when you differentiate this, it's going to be pretty close to the numerator. But let's just be careful. When you calculate your differential, dt, derivative of sine is cosine. And the derivative of cosine is negative sine. And that's all multiplying dx. Now that part in the parentheses is pretty close to your numerator, but the negative's off. So if you want, just take this statement, factor a negative out, and you can put it on the other side. And what we get is negative dt equals sine of x minus cosine of x times dx. All right, and now we can easily convert this. So if we rewrite our integral here from x and rewrite it in terms of now t, we have basically 1 over t. There's a minus and we're integrating that with respect to t, so that's times dt. And that's very easy to evaluate here. That's just going to come out to be negative natural log of t, and we can just plug back in our substitution variable t, which was sine plus cosine. All right, and that's basically the work here. If we just are careful to keep track of our work, integrate each term, first term, 1 half, that integrates to 1 half x. And over on the side, we just evaluated the antiderivative of sine minus cosine over sine plus cosine. Notice we have a minus and a factor of a half. So we'll write this next antiderivative that we get here as minus one half. And then times that natural log expression, natural log of sine of x plus cosine of x. And we get our antiderivative here with minimal work because we, again, used a very creative algebraic trick. Now, this identity, it's worth putting in your mathematical toolbox because a lot of the other problems that we'll be getting to in the art of integration will involve very similar algebraic tricks. So take a look at some other integrals, like from your Calc 2 course or other places, and maybe see if you can try evaluating them using this identity. Hope you enjoyed this problem in our series, The Art of Integration, where we're focusing on creativity in mathematics for solving integrals. If you enjoyed the content, you know what to do. Hit that subscribe button and support the channel.